Hi everybody, welcome back to season two of Thrift Across New England. I am so excited to share all of my adventures in off the beaten path thrift stores this summer in New England. Today we are kicking it off with a very special trip to Marblehead. This is a very unique experience where we get to see behind the scenes on how a thrift store is run, a non-for-profit thrift store that raises money for the school district in Marblehead. I was able to talk to some of the board members, the shop manager, some of the employees. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll have a little haul in the middle of it and then at the end we also go to a second location and do some thrifting at a local Salvation Army so be sure to stay till the end I will put some timestamps in the description in case you want to jump around if you're having a good time be sure to like this video and subscribe if you would like to see more from me all right let's get into the video Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I am super excited today because I am taking you to a new location. This is my first installment of the second season of Thrift Across New England, so welcome. Today I am going to a shop called the Magic Hat Thrift Store in Marblehead, Mass. I connected with a woman named Laura who I met at the bins in New Hampshire who recognized me from my channel and she sits on the board at this thrift store and invited me to check it out and today is the day I'm finally going. Let's get over there and meet Laura and get inside and do some magical thrifting. <laughs> limited hours Wednesday Thursday Friday 10 to 2 and then Saturday 9 to 1 this is a timeline of when they started they started in September of 2005 and all of the money that they raised every year to go to the schools um, so this is mostly where the housewares are here and the shop is not open just yet so this is such a treat for me to be able to come in and check things out so to the left here is the shop and over here is where they do all of their sorting hi friends this is the sorting room this is the sorting room this is where every all the fun happens it's where all the magic all happens, happens <laughs> this is it exactly <laughs> all right there's some of our board members right here there's Laura. Hi, Laura. Hello, hello. And Gail. Gail, yes. Good morning. And Stephanie. And Stephanie. All right. I'm so excited that we get the sneak peek. I love the color coordination. I just want to give Laura a little introduction hey. here yeah, because ahead, Laura. Laura and I met at the Goodwill oh, Outlet Vince, yeah. in New Hampshire. Uh, and you were with your friend. Ornella, who actually, she's going to come, but she's running like she's coming from Marshfield. Oh, yeah. She wants to thrift later. It's funny because that Thursday was our first trip to the bins and Ornella moved from France and she watched you. That's how she kind of like made it through COVID and that's how she started her resale business. Oh my gosh. Um, and she said, oh my gosh, Lori of Lori's Boston Found comes to this bins and you showed up that day. Oh, that's nuts. Yeah. It was meant to be. It we was meant, meant to be. connect that day. Um, and you were with Lisette that day. Yes. She was so lovely. Shout out to Lisette. Isn't she the sweetest? She's so sweet. <laughs> I recently joined the board of the Magic Hat and I'm like, oh my gosh, we have to get Lori here. Tell me a little bit about the Facebook group that you run because I know a lot of people would be interested in that. Right, so we, Ornella and I co-run a Facebook group called the Sustainably Styled Squad and it's geared towards anyone who's interested in sustainable fashion, resellers, people that are just looking you know, to purchase, also people that are just interested in what sustainable fashion is. We have so many wonderful members like spanning the whole world. We have a reseller in Japan, we have multiple resellers um, in Canada, we also have a reseller in, in Mexico, so it's, it's really, the, the reach is very broad. We have live sales that we host like three times a week mm. where resellers you know go live from remotely from where they live and we run the sale from from home so usually I, I run it from bed because it's like eight to nine <laughs> and I'm like trying to stay awake Wait, tell me a little bit about your outfit Laura oh my god you look so fantastic I'm, I'm obsessed with this look complete second hand um, <laughs> that's what I'm about uh, the sustainable fashion so get in here and see, look at the detail look at the little <laughs> ruffle here on the denim She's yeah so this is a this is a goodwill um, a goodwill jumpsuit I got this from a reseller in New Hampshire 
I'm sure I'll have to let you know who she was because I can't remember off the top of my head um, Ornella I got these from her my vintage Swarovski so clip-on these are from Poshmark and then I wear this every single day from the magic hat oh this is Isn't so, that pretty? so pretty oh that's beautiful yeah I love it yep. as soon as I saw you I'm like oh she looks so good oh, so good thank you all right well thank you for that this is Dawn tell us what you do here Dawn uh, let's see certain days I work behind the register as a cashier, but I'm also, uh, let's see, a personal shopper for a lot of my customers that come in. Um, and I also work in the back room, in the sorting room, pricing and tagging and researching items before they go on the floor. And you did that, the beautiful display oh, over I there, I right? Stage all the cabinets. All the, all the color coordination yes. over there. I love it. It's my favorite part of my job. I'm always curious what shop owners think about resellers, how easy we are to identify, which I think the answer is very easy. Well, <laughs> I was an added value reseller myself. Okay. And, um, haven't done that for a long time now, but I love resellers. I love knowing my customers and um, figuring out what it is that they always look for, what they sell. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm kind of in demand when people come in the store now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, You're like, the go-to girl. Don't you see I'm busy? <laughs> I don't mind dedicating my time to that. It's actually enjoyable. We just like doing the shelves, you know. It's just a fun job. That's exciting. the best retirement job you could ever have. Oh, great. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show off your shelves here now. Okay. <laughs> So this is like all like a little turquoise and then we have some yellow and green. She's done such a nice job. And this bowl was only three dollars. So nice. Okay, this is the kids section over here. Really reasonably priced. I am taking a peek at the clearance rack. Most of the items here are one or two dollars. I did end up finding some items, a couple that I plan on keeping for myself and some to resell. I would say that overall the prices here, um, as far as reselling goes, might be on the higher side, but there are definitely things that you can find to flip if you are a reseller. It's a wonderful shopping experience if you are shopping for yourself. And obviously it goes to just an amazing cause. So we're getting ready to meet Ornella, who is Laura's partner for the Sustainable Squad on Facebook. Hello, look at this skirt. It's vintage, like from the 60s. Oh so, yeah. yeah. And you collect butterflies? Yes, I collect everything that is butterflies on vintage clothing. <laughs> so Beautiful. Look at it's going in my collection. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We're going to break right here and I'm going to share with you some of the items that I got at the Magic Hat. Isn't Laura amazing? I really felt such a great connection with her and Ornella as well. We had so much fun. So stay tuned. We're going to go shopping some more at the end of this video. Um, but I did want to share with you some of the pieces that I bought. I ended up getting this flax linen coat. This was either $9 or maybe it was 15. I think this was nine. And it's this cropped floral pattern. I do okay with flax, but I haven't really tried selling a floral pattern. So I thought this was great for spring. It is a size small, 100% linen. Let me know how you do selling flax. I'm excited to get that listed. Actually, all of these items will be listed, except for this one, because this I am keeping. I spent $15 on this knowing that I was going to wear it. I've been on a hunt for just a very classic layered blouse or just something that I could wear with jeans that might be a little bit dressy. This is Vineyard Vines in a size large and it has a v-neck which I love and it has some pleating right here. It's almost like a gauzy f feel and it's cream colored. It has semi sheer sleeves. This was $15. I would not pay $15 for this if I was planning to resell it. It is 100% silk so it is a beautiful piece for my own collection so I was excited to grab that for myself. There was just something about this little sweatshirt. This was in the kids section and it was on clearance for a dollar. I was just in love with this little pullover with the sun and the bright bold colors. I thought it was so unique. Uh, it is in European sizing. It says 120. It has like a tiny little stain right here which I did not notice when I was in there. And for the most part, they are really meticulous about pulling things from the floor if anything is flawed. 
uh, but this was just so cute. This could also be why it was on clearance. I love this. I'll probably list it for $15 or $18. It is a size 120, so I'm not sure what that is. It looks like maybe it's like a size two or three. Just adorable. I also picked up this Kate Spade skirt to sell. The comps on this style were really pretty decent. I would say between like $40 and $65. Some were new with tag and sold even higher than that. It's just a little pleated skirt and it has roses on it, black on black, and it is just stunning. It has this exposed zipper in the back. The retail on this skirt was over $300. Kate Spade doesn't resell for tremendous numbers for me, but this particular skirt I really loved. And it's, and it's a size 10, which I think is great. So I'll show you the tag. Um, Kate Spade, New York. So this is their, this is the top of the line. It's not Saturday or outlet or anything like that. Just pleated and adorable. I think I have that listed at $75 and I'm hoping for at least $45 to $50 for it in the end. And last up from the Magic Hat, I picked up this bag. I just loved this bag. Very bohemian. It was $15 and it is just gorgeous. This is, looks like a wool blend here. There is a little mark. There are a couple marks here you can see, but when the flap comes over, it kind of covers it. So all leather trim, an adjustable strap in the back. I just think it's gorgeous. It's heavy, just would make an outfit. And I think for festival season, if people are going out to concerts, outdoor venues and things like that, you can pop in your water bottle or whatever you need here. And it does clasp in the front. It has this little gold clasp right here. So this can thread through and you can strap it together. So absolutely adorable. I loved this. I couldn't leave without this. So as you can see, I paid up for three items. I paid $15 and then I paid $9, I think for the flax and a dollar for the little kid sweatshirt. So I want to give you an idea of what the pricing was there. Now we're going to go back to the shop and we're going to talk to Gail. She's going to give us a little bit of the history of the magic hat shop. And then we are going to talk to Diane. You're going to love her Boston accent. We're going to talk to Diane, who is the shop manager. And then we will be heading to Salvation Army. Fortunately, I don't know much about the history of starting the shop prior to 2014 when I came on the board. But I do know that it started very small with a group of people who were interested in starting a thrift shop and all the proceeds would be donated to the PTOs and PCOs of the Marblehead Public Schools. So it was a fantastic idea. We're now 17 years into the shop and we've given over a million dollars away to the PCOs and PTOs of the Town for Enrichment Activities. And every year we're able to give away more and more money. COVID obviously forced us to close for a little while, but we're back on our game again and I think our allocation that's coming up will be one of the largest that we've been able to give so far. Um, our donations come from people in the community and the community's been extremely generous. We get clothing, we get housewares, we get small pieces of furniture that the community gives and most people that live in the community are happy to donate to us because they know the proceeds are going back to the students in the school. Absolutely. We also have um, a student that is a cashier that works for us on Saturday and we have a lot of students that come in and do volunteer hours. The volunteer portion of it is extremely important to all of us because they're giving back to the community not only through their donations to the shop but through their time which is really really nice. This is Diane and she is the shop manager here at the Magic Cat Thrift Shop so she's just gonna walk us through like what happens when they get donations and share with us like the process of how, how it goes here. It starts here at the front door people pull up we have a couple of pocket spots right up front here um, we have a list of what we take and don't take, so we kind of sort through them at the front door so we're not getting rid of too much stuff. We ask people to take it home, maybe take it to the swap shed here in town or donate it to Life Bridge in Salem somewhere that may be able to use it if we don't. We don't take baby items, it's a legality thing, you know. I mean, we like toys and games and things like that, but nothing, car seats, strollers, nothing like that. This time of year we're taking spring and summer now, mm -hmm. clothing goes in there. If we do get nice winter things, we have a whole back room, we store nice pieces, we put them away, so when fall comes in September or late August, we've got bins and bins we can just start pulling out. That's yeah, smart. So you do you do bring things out according yeah, to the season. We save all nice pieces. Nice. You know, and then we redonate a lot. We we donate to Planet A. We put the stuff in here, we roll the cart down, or people just grab it. We come down the hallway and we're gonna go into the, the, the sorting room as we call right. it. All right. 
on the way we'll feel like Harry Potter. It's the magic hat in the sorting room. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then it comes in here, okay. and it gets piled. Fortunately, we're looking good this week because this whole area <laughs> where Steph is was <laughs> overloaded, and this whole area was overloaded. But we really worked this week and got to time it out. So what happens is people will bring it in, they'll throw it on the floor, then it gets sorted. We have clothing. Is this is a whole clothing area here? This is Kendra over here who does books, toys, home goods, and linens. Wow. So everybody has their specialty? Pretty much. This is my area of chaos because everything seems to land on my desk when no one knows where it's supposed to go. <laughs> but you know where it all belongs. Yes. <laughs> not really, but you know, when I hear this, that was easy. I know I'm in trouble because <laughs> something else just landed on my desk and no one knows what to do with. And then we spend the day pricing and it's the staff that prices we look up a lot of stuff we're very lucky now because with you know google lens we can we can do a lot and then we converse a lot like okay so for instance kendra's got a china set back there it's worth some money it's beautiful then we try and say yeah but what can we get for it here you know so we we do a lot of what do you think about this or i found this online gold so trim is so pretty so the staff pretty much talks amongst ourselves like how much do we have we have a lot of china right now is it you know if we sell a whole set is it like 50 cents a piece if the, like what do we say like there's a 91 pieces and we'll try and get 99 dollars for it if not next week we'll mark it down to 75 gotcha then maybe down to 50 you know sometimes putting it online really helps to have stuff go because people see their pattern here we had someone come in the other day who saw us online from Colorado and has a house here in Beverly and called the guy who does stuff for her and said get over there right now and go get those coffee cups for me because they were a deal at twenty dollars oh absolutely so you have a website for the shop and you sell things through the site as well and we don't sell through the site but we, we feature have, things yes yeah, so we have a Facebook page and then we're also on um, Instagram so I usually post something every morning on on Facebook and then Instagram so if you like us there you can always message us from there too and do you do you hold things for people um, we will only for like a day or two okay that makes sense yeah just thinking of what people are gonna want to know if they yeah. want to come yeah a lot of times you. we get that like could you just take that out back and I'll, I'll come in tomorrow and then we will we'll go out and pull it off the we'll say yep it's still here we'll pull it on the floor and keep it out back how long have you been with the shop like two and a half years now but with COVID we were shut down for a while we're going to be allocating um, money I don't know if the um, the board out there mentioned to you that we're allocating money for the six month period this week. Oh, exciting. So yeah, we're up to like, yep, $100,000 will be given wow. to the schools in wow. six months. So that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, that's we in broke a record time? this month. Yeah. 90 was the highest. We just hit a hundred. I'm very proud. So. Congratulations. Yep, thank as you. you should be. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. This is the clothing this area. This is the clothing area. What it comes in is, and Amy isn't here today, so she'll come in tomorrow and this whole table will be piled sky high. It'll be on the floor she won't be able to get in and what she'll do is start going through I love that it's called the decision table yeah <laughs> <laughs> and these and this is her guy here he gets a little angry sometimes when she comes in and we can't see him because there's so many clothes to sort through <laughs> but that's a good thing so these are the clothes that she's gone through that we will tag mm -hmm. and then a lot of times our volunteers we have them tag they just sit here with the gun and the tagging system and they just sit here and price and everything or tag thing. it and then usually Amy or I will price it how many the, items do you think hit the floor every day it varies yeah. yeah I mean if we're super busy out there sometimes we're all hands on deck like just waiting on people out there showing jewelry getting shoes organize and help and bring stuff down if it's a donation day mm -hmm. on a quiet day like Tuesday all we do is price I see so we can probably put out you know like two thousand dollars worth of merchandise on a quiet day. Gotcha. Okay. On a busy day, it might be you know like five hundred. Right. But that's okay because that's the day we're making money. You know. So. I love it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You're Diane. very welcome. This is thank great. you. This is great. It's like a little sombrero. Oh my gosh. It, it actually like works with your outfit. <laughs> Absolutely. So cute. I don't know. I have a giant head. <laughs> so cute. Isn't that cute? So I think it's adorable. Soft. Chapeau. Chapeau. Yes. Chapeau, yes. Louise. <laughs> So this definitely came from the um, Paris gallery that um, donated all of their stuff. And they're like, I'm moving to Florida, take our fixtures, take our everything that's in here. They were oh, really nice. generous.
I'm here with Laura and we are heading to Salvation Army. Yeah, this is a good one. It's big. I'm so excited. So I've never been to this one. Where do we want to? No, this is a pretty green one. We can share it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're in Saugus, yep. Mass. Route one. Route one. Um, and I'm super excited to be here. We're on a very busy road, but we're going to head in in Ornella. Yep. Ornella's going, coming. She's going to meet us inside. And yeah, let's see what we can find. Yay. That's super cute. I, I mean, for myself, I would pay $20. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it's priced at 40 it, But it's half off. So cute. Yeah. It's cute. That's for you. Fits you great. I like it. I like it a lot. Look at this little number. I thought this was so pretty. Love that. This seems definitely. That's really cute. Just can't tell if there's. See under the arm if it's like. Does that look stained? It does look a little bit. But you know what? Um, soaking that in like some sodium percarbonate or retro clean. On one of my cleaning, like TikTok, she, I don't remember what it was, but mm -hmm. she lists like a concoction of just household stuff that's like ret retro clean and does just as well. She said, oh, "Really?" So I'm, I mean, and it's less expensive. So I love to definitely worth. I use trying. peroxide baking soda and Dawn liquid. That's like my little concoction, but I've never used the retro stuff. So retro clean. So Ornella had me buy it's sodium percarbonate. It came in like it's like white powder, mm -hmm. and you soak it with like warm water, and it does it brightens up. Like it's good to know. I'm gonna life. try it on this. That's really pretty. I yeah. love that. This is just too much fun. <gasps> Wait. Yes. Oh, you wow. found it. <laughs> I get very excited. Ornella, did you find anything? <laughs> me? Yeah. Uh, I found some Zara dresses for me. All right, let me see. So, um, here. So, I don't know. The Zara stuff is just so good. It's good, I think, for yourself. I want something sexy for summer. That is so. gorgeous. Yeah, there is like some slip. And I'm going to Vegas for my birthday, so mm -hmm. I want something Vegas, sexy. baby. I love it. Yay. <laughs> Those are stunning. Look, they fit. I think. Oh, oh, don't mind my socks. The sock. <laughs> they look great with the Under Armour socks. Yeah, you know, it's so a vibe. <laughs> At this location, there was one 99 cent color and then two half off colors. Uh, but generally speaking, a lot of their items were expensive. I like these Pajar boots, but they did show some wear and I'm not sure what they had them priced at, but they were priced up. Um, I was curious about these Crocs because Crocs can do well for me, but they were priced at $8. I think that was a half off color, uh, but the comps still weren't great on that particular style. I did do all right with jeans at this store and i'm just looking at some pricing here this was twelve dollars these made well were cute but they had a, a pretty big stain right there i wasn't sure i'd be able to get that out but i think i did find another pair of made well on this day and here they are they're a nice light wash and a high rise they're that vintage style and the perfect vintage uh, so pink actually was the full price color i remember because i grabbed those Is like textured yeah it's puffy paint oh, that is cute i like finding um larger sizes in like cute styles because mm, yes. it's harder to find it is it is it's really cute that will probably go on depot yeah that's so pretty and that's the made in usa with the union label tag corset <laughs> I love it what do you think you'd get for that um i would say 30. yeah yes 30. um there is no price tag so pretty <laughs> Band on the Run is playing really loud in the back, so I had to turn it down. But this store had an enormous amount of new tag Zara, but the pricing was pretty high. I wonder if Ange would wear this. Like just baggy, yeah. hang around with, oh, that dress is so pretty. Yeah, they did have a great selection of Zara pieces, and I do believe they qualified for the half off color, just not for 99 cents. So it might be worth it to come back and look at some of the Zara pieces, like on a Monday when they do the markdown, and see if anything would be worth reselling. Hello! Go, oh, sit. 
Good girl. Oh, you're such a freshie. Hi. I had so much fun shopping with Ornella and with Laura. They just are way too hip for me. They had such a great sense of style. And it was so interesting to talk to Ornella about thrift stores and how different they are in France. Um, it doesn't sound like there are as many in France, but it sounds like the prices are low unless there are specific vintage style shops. And they are just vintage shoppers extraordinaire. I learned a lot from shopping with them. I've been um, collecting a lot of Levi's jeans because as you know, I'm working on a series for Levi's. And one of the first videos that I'm going to do is um, sharing with you how to date your Levi's, like how to see what era they are from. So I'm in the process of learning and everywhere I go someplace, if the Levi's look remotely interesting, I am picking them up. So these are some classics, some 501s and they are high rise. These are more of a contemporary pair with some factory distressing. Uh, they had a nice little clump of denim and so I grabbed them all. This is another pair of Levi's. I think these are a little bit older. Oh no, these are the wedgie skinny though. I love the wedgie style. I typically like the wedgie straight, but I'll take the wedgie skinny. Some of these were full price, some were half price. These may have been on sale. But then these made well, which are so nice, these were full price. Um, and these are the curvy, perfect vintage jean. I love the vintage style for made well. And these were a size 26. And I love the light wash for summer, high rise. Like this is exactly the style that I'm looking for. Hoping to get between like 45 and $55 for these. So I was really excited with the jeans that I found. Ornella gave me these. I thought these were so cute. These are City Limits, which I believe are from Payless, if I remember. Um, but this is a Y2K style for Depop. And Ornella also works full time. So she does thrifting and reselling part time and she has limited space. So she was forced to say no to something. So she handed me a couple items and this was one of them. This is like a really stretchy, well, not so stretchy, but it's a very soft fabric. And um, these are size eight and a half and these are that chunky Y2K 90s vibe. These were eight or $9, it just says P on the bottom. Where's the other one? This was pink. So this was a newer color, so not on sale. Uh, but anyway, I have these listed for $45 on Depop, I believe. Ornella was pretty confident that I would get around that $40 mark. So I was excited to add to my Depop closet. I did sell one other dress on Depop. I'm up to two sales over there. Um, but I love the aesthetic over there. So I'm having fun adding to that shop. Ornella also gave me these Lily Pulitzer shorts. I thought these were adorable. They are an eyelet short, very summery. They have little gold hardware and these little um, pineapples on the drawstring. So the this is size small. Uh, they are lined also, hoping to get around $30 to $35 for these. This is the right season for Lily. I don't buy so much Lily in the winter months, but I think her stuff, for me at least, sells better in the summer. I picked this up originally to wear on Easter Sunday. I went away with the family to the Poconos and we met the kids and we did go out to a really nice dinner there, but I ended up wearing black, of course. I wanted to branch out. I thought this was really cute. It has a very dramatic collar. This was on sale, I believe. This was a half price item. Oh, I brought this to the register and they marked it down to $1.99. That's what it was because it wasn't originally intended for resale, but I might resell it now, but there's these tiny little pulls here in this teeny tiny mark right here. I have not washed this yet. I'm going to try to get the stains out. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this, although it is really pretty. It kind of gives me Prince vibes with like purple rain with the ruffly wrist and the high collar, uh, but Laura picked that out for me, encouraged me to get that. I grabbed this based on the recommendation of Laura and Ornella as well. They were saying how much they love these like vintage tops just to wear like half tucked in with a pair of jeans, just a very casual vibe, but also feminine. It has this really pretty lace detail um, and the size was right and everything. But when I got it home, this was also on sale. When I got it home, I noticed there was a hole under the armpit. So I need to mend that because I planned on just keeping this. 
I'm really trying to get a couple more layering pieces since I wear so much black, at least if I have a pop of color underneath. Today I have the reverse. I have the black underneath with just like a little pop of something over, but I'm, I'm really trying to branch out. It's not easy for me. I grabbed this. This was also on sale. It's Diva by Christine. This is a linen piece. So I did not pick this up for brand. I picked this up mostly for fabric content and because I thought it was a pretty vintage style. So this will also go on Depop as well as Poshmark and eBay. It looks like, is this inside out? No. Oh, it looks like this is meant to be folded up the cuff. Otherwise you get a little stitching. So really cute. It's like a nice soft pink. I feel like this is a pretty timeless look. And then um, I did end up getting this little lace top. I thought this was vintage. And then I got home and I looked at the tag and it's Zara and it says autumn, winter, 1718. So very far from vintage, but I still loved this. And it has a zipper in the back and I did get the stain out, although I didn't do the treatment that Laura mentioned, but I do plan on getting that to see if I can brighten up some of the vintage pieces that I have. So this is semi-sheer and it also has some beading and little velvet uh, swirls here. I just thought this was really pretty. It looks so vintage, but uh, apparently it is not. And the last thing that I found as I was getting ready to check out, or Ornella had left and then I was hanging out with Laura and we were kind of just making the final round and I got this Bulga, B-U-L-G-A. You can see, you see the tag there? There it is. This gorgeous satchel in this soft, beautiful leather. Um, this is just beautiful. This was priced at $12.99, so it was half off or $9.99 and half off. It was a great deal. The price on this bag, or I should say the price on some of the bags from this brand are really all over the place. I saw some in like the $20 range and I saw some for well over a hundred. I'm hoping to get about 60 to 70 for this. It's really just gorgeous. It has this gold on the side so you can wear it as a shoulder bag. I'm not sure if it's long enough to wear as a crossbody. I suppose if you had a smaller frame, you could wear this as a crossbody. It almost gives me Chloe vibes, the brand Chloe with kind of the shape of the bottom. And it has these, these magnetic pockets on the outside. It has a really pretty fabric liner. I thought this was a steal for five or six dollars. So I scooped that up. It was pretty heavy. This would have weighed a lot at the bins. I think this cost me the same amount of money at the thrift store as it would have cost at the bins, if not less. As I mentioned in the video, they had an incredible selection of Zara pieces, which my local Salvation Army also gets Zara pieces donated. They must have some sort of an agreement with the local Salvation Armies in Massachusetts. This particular store had a great selection, but they are definitely more expensive. And as I mentioned, they don't qualify for the 99 cent markdown, but if it's an older tag, that's part of the 50% off sale, it does qualify for that. So what I noticed is that they were pricing the items 50% off whatever the Zara tag was. That was their price. And then if it happened to be an older ticket that was on sale, you could then get it for half off of that. But I think that's as low as they will go. Some of the pieces were gorgeous. Actually, I got a dress that I forgot to share. I'm gonna go grab it from my closet because it's beautiful. I bought it for myself. It was new with tag. It's a summer dress. I love it. So let me grab that. I'm so right glad back. I remembered this because I am obsessed with this dress. Laura actually held this up during the video. And then when I got up close to it, I had to take it home. So this is it, Zara. The price on this, this is just what I was saying. It was $19.99. They had it priced at $39.99. Honestly, if I went back and they had these dresses for half off, I think I would buy all of them for $10 because they are beautiful. It is beautiful. So it is fully lined. It has this really beautiful hem. It is so feminine. Uh, I don't love wearing sleeveless things or things that show my arms all the time, but the girl suggested that maybe I do like a white t-shirt underneath, and I thought that would be really cute, and I tried it on, and the neckline is beautiful. I could also wear something over it, like a, a little cardigan sweater, something light, maybe in a cream color, but I love this, and I'm really looking forward to the summer months to wear this beauty. It's so beautiful. 
It was so much fun to get a behind the scenes peek at how this thrift shop is run and how incredible that they just cut a check to the PTO for $100,000 in a six month span from this thrift shop. They talked a lot about how all the members of the community get involved, people volunteer time. They were saying that even moms who can't get into the thrift shop to actually put time in because they have little ones at home will take laundry home with them and clean things up and make sure things aren't stained and then bring them back for them to put on the floor. So it is really a community effort. It is located at the middle school. Uh, during school, it is. it was just such a fascinating setup. This would be a really nice model to see replicated in different parts of the country. That's all for today. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. If you would like to see more from me, it means so much to me. Huge shout out to Laura and Ornella and the whole staff at the Magic Hat Thrift Shop in Marblehead. I will be sure to link everybody's information in the description so please check them out i hope you enjoyed the kickoff to season two of thrift across new england i'm looking forward to exploring more places in new england this summer so i'll be back real soon with another video everybody thanks again bye